so good day and welcome back so we're gonna continue from where we left off in the previous video where we add a resource now we're gonna add a data access object we can talk a little bit about data access object but not too much because it can get pretty confusing and different technology stack uses it differently so we're just gonna basically think of it as a way of abstracting how we interact with a data source now on our client side, we really don't have a data source like a database or anything. So we really is our data source is sort of like our backend server. So that's how we're really interacting with our backend service, like our data store source, right? Um, data store. So um, our DAO, data access object, is going to allow us to access objects of this data type, which in this case is going to be our comment. So let's jump in and take a look. We're going to continue uh, where we left off. And in the previous video section, we created a resource. Now we are using a resource from the controller, but that's not really ideal because if we were trying to have another controller, let's say, I don't know what controller that I can think of right now, but anyway, we had another controller or even a service that wanted to use our, um, our resource, our comment resource, we have to redo all that work of how you call a resource and the then and all this sort of stuff. So it seems like we need some way to abstract that functionality of um, using a comment resource so we don't have to encapsulate all the details of it. The advantage of that too is that if we ever wanted to change out how do we talk to the back end or something, or if we talk to another back end or multiple back ends, let's say we try one and it doesn't work and then we try another, we can uh, we don't have to, our controller wouldn't be aware of it or need to have multiple resources injected. We could hide that out somewhere. So I'm not going to get into it, but depending on the technology stack you're using, um, they call the different things with a, playing the same role, different names. So for example, if you're using Spring in Java, for example, you would have an entity, you have an entity manager, and then you also have a data access object. Um, now, there, the the technology is closer to the ORM, so a real object relational matter, app, mapper like Ibernate. And so um, the way you interact with those things, it, do, do, it makes sense to have those, um, you know, entity manager and so on. Now, here in Angular and web technology world with Node and JS and all that stuff, you kind of split things a little bit. And on the back end, you're going to have an ORM, that's like your Blueboard or Mongoose, which map the objects you have in JavaScript to the objects, you, the things, you, the entities you have in a database. But there, we don't really have relationship, but so it's still sort of like an ORM, but not quite. Like I say, um, I don't want to spend too much time on it because of the different technology stack and the name can get really weird and can get really confusing. And it's a lot to learn if you don't know this stuff, if you never, you're not familiar with it. So I just want to say though that here we're going to have a model which is like an entity in those other stack technology stack, and this represents a model is going to we're going to think of model and entity interchangeably. We're going to use the word interchangeably, and basically it represents the things that from the real world that you want to model in your application. So that's going to be a comment, task, hotel, car, person, that sort of thing. Now, of course, some of those things might be abstract like a task, but it's a thing from the world that you want to matter modeling your application. So that's where the word model come from. Now that represents that the, all the properties for that thing and when it's valid and so on. Like we said, you can put methods on it on your model. But where how you move these model around in your application and where you store them in a database, for example, in our case we're gonna store it in MongoDB. And how we get it in MongoDB, we're not talking to MongoDB directly, we talk to a backend service. And that backend service uses Mongoose to talk to MongoDB, right? Very complicated. And we're not even talking about the backend server yet right now, but we know that's what's happening. And so, uh, but for the front end, we still need to pass these objects back and forth. So we're still going to be passing our model back and forth. But even on the front end application, we don't want to burden parts of the controller that deals with the UI with how you talk to the back end as we were doing before where we'll have our controller directly to call in dollar sign HTTP. Here instead, we want to abstract it a little bit. Now, you can see that resource, even though it's a higher level than dollar sign HTTP, it's still kind of low level because that's the thing that's doing those RESTful calls. 
So we, now we're going to introduce a data access object and just an object or class that implements the idea of how to um, manipulate and um, access um, data, right? And the data is going to be responsible for is the comment um, model. So let's just jump right in. I could keep talking for a bit and this video is getting very long. So if we look at the existing data access object that came with the example, we'll see that how they implement it as a, um, there's the function, and then at the end they return new. So it is a factory. Um, so, oh, there it is, factory, they return it as a factory, and then they call new on it. Now, if this was implemented as a service, as it had done here, they simply didn't have to call new, and what would happen is Angular would call new instead. So either way, you could implement it as a service or you could implement it as a factory. It doesn't really matter. Um, the important thing is that uh, is the functionality it provides. And what it provides is that the to-do is actually injected. That's a model. And then the resource. And then this to-do DAO, data access object, creates a bunch of uh, prototype or functions, extend this constructor function with operations to you know be able to get all the resources and so on so we could create a factory or a service it doesn't matter so um, I'm just gonna say um, so let me start up my application and say npm run dev and that should start up my application here um, I already have the MongoD database running and you could see this um, it's up and it's running there and so what I'll do is um, let me do this and I'm going to shorten my prompt a little bit. Ah, come on. Come on. All right. So clear that. All right. So I'm going to say yo ng full stack. And again, I can use, uh, I don't have specific subgenerator. If I go look at ng full stack subgenerators, on the client front end, I have component. I have, um, and that's only for Angular 2. I have a controller which we've used and created already. We have directive, we have a service, we have filter, factory, resource, decorator, and module. So it's either a service or a factory. We don't actually have something that says specifically DAO. So let's go with um, a factory as since, um, you know, we have that already. Uh, we've been using that. But so factory, we want the comment um DAO and uh, maybe DAO and then we want to put it in the feature to do okay and so if we come over and we look we'll see we'll get a um, a factory um, now where is our comment resource oh there it is all right sweet all right so we have this DAO now for factory. And so it's a factory. And um, what we know is this function, we're going to actually call new on it to return a new um, constructed object that we're just going to use over and over. And since we don't need to store any property in this, um, this constructor function, it doesn't take any parameters. We don't need to store anything in it. And we're going to extend it that with um, is valid, but right get all, for example, um, is one of the functions. Okay, let's let's do a create because we already have the create function in um, here. So if you remember in our controller, we already had a create function that we had written. So we'll cut it out from here and we'll come over here and we'll say, hey, um, let's put this down here and so we'll take that out and so that's our create function so it says create equals um, comment take a comment extend it that way and then the comment resource we have to inject that so um, we should definitely inject um, comment and we should inject comment resource All right and no, there is a, a constructor um, or factory function. So comment and comment resource, right? 
So we inject those, we're using that here. And let's see, so that's our create function. And it looks like if we are successful, what we should really do is, let's look at what it did um, here, is they return the promise. So if you look at create, what it did is return the result. So as we know from when we play with um, promises, you can return a value or return another promise. So here they rejected a promise. So they do dollar sign reject without creating a default object. They just do dollar sign that reject error on error. So just returning a promise. So we're going to do the exact same thing. So when or we're successful, we will we can't push on the thing because we don't have it. So we're going to do return a new comment based on the object that we got back from the back end. So we build a valid comment for the front end using the constructor function comment. And then if there's an error, what we're going to do is return a reject from the queue service, reject this error with whatever the error message. Now, why are we doing a return here on this create function? That's going to allow us to nest it with a just assigning the value. As you can see, if we look here, oh, it's used, we'll see that when you use your DA or your call it to do, you can just say then and catch because those are promises, right? That's what we're returning, promises. All right. So um, let's see here now. Um, where's our comment? Oh, so, so our controller, um, we had self that create as the function, and we're going to call the comment DAO that create, right? We literally just um, connect the, the, the two. Well, we don't actually want to do that actually because function comment and what we want to do is say comment um, comment that command DAO that create and pass in comment that object and then we want to say then if this is successful remember promises return you can return a promise from a promise so if that's the case then we want to do um, self that comments that push um, x that's going to be a new comment object um, if not we want to do catch error and then now we can do self that mesg or whatever we, we decided to call it is equals to error message okay Remember when we call create on the DO, it returns a promise. How do we know it returns a promise? Because we know when we play with a promise object that if you have a promise and you call then on it and return either a value or another promise, you could just keep chaining it. So that's all. All right. So there was only, the only one thing left to do is to copy this and inject it into our controller. So we want to replace this, we're not going to use the resource directory, we're using the promise, um, the, the DAO. And same thing here, um, we essentially want to take this, copy this, go over to our DAO, and we want to say, um, um, go up here, and we want to say comment DAO.prototype that delete or remove whatever we want is equals to some function that takes the comment ID, some ID, right? And then what does it do with that ID? Well, it creates an object and I take the resource and it calls it with C. And then if that's the case, then it returns the value here, which is the new, um, well, there's not much to return when you do a delete, right? So let's see, what did they return in this deal? When you do it, when you do a delete. Oh, just return on success, just return simply. And then of course, reject it. 
because there's not much to do and here you do dollar sign reject the rank you will reject this error right so there's nothing no nothing to return if it's successful you don't return anything on the den of this promise and we can go grab now here when we get a comment id we don't have to create the object we could push the, we don't know the details of what's going on. We can ask the DAO to take care of it. So we can say, DAO, I want you to do a delete for me, passing in this comment ID. And then we don't have to return the promise ourselves. We just know that oh, this delete function from the DAO is going to return a promise. And either the pro when that promise is successful, well, we know there's nothing to really get or do. So um you know we don't actually have to pass a function here um the only thing we really care about is if it fails which is um the catch and then we can put the error message on the screen uh, one another another one is this which is to fetch a specific thing so if we want we can say on our comment dao that we want to do is a prototype that get by id is equal to a function that takes on an id takes an id and i should have just duplicated the other thing um really um i'm gonna copy this paste this in here and instead i do get by id and promise return if the only difference here now I actually have a value to return, which is result. And then if it fails, reject it. Okay. Now why? Oh, this might be complaining because of the extra. All right. So that. Um, the final one we might want to create. So, and then what happens here? When I call this now, this simply calls get by ID on the DAO with the comment ID. And then we don't need to worry about creating the promise ourselves. It's a successful, successful. We get something by ID. We might wanna, I don't know, push down the list or something. So, or log it. And then if there's an error. So that's that, what is this? Um, catch error, um, self that push. Why is it complaining? Catch that error. Oh, um, oh, catch as a function. Function which takes an error. And that. So I don't know how it got mixed up, but. Yep. All right. So the function that takes an error. Okay. So that looks good. All right. Um, so that's our create and fetch. And now we have pushed the responsibility into the DAO. Um, of course, we can continue go ahead and create more elaborate. Um, more elaborate. Um, thing like get all or fetch all and this doesn't take any parameter of course because we're getting all the comments available and this is just a simply a get function which we can see by going to our comment resource and we see that when we want to get all we just call a get action on it and so that's what we're going to call um, where is it uh, um, idea call get we don't need to worry about a promise. Oh yeah, we have to worry about that here. And then, of course, the results. Uh, this is going to be an array of objects. So how do you turn an array into um, the results that you want? Well, we just here it simply return the the return the results as a promise. So we can do the same thing. And we can just say return results. And of course, on reject, return a rejected promise or rejection. 
and now we can kind of test we already have all the code wire up here so assuming that so this is remove fetch and create or we didn't change our front end we should be able uh, let's close this we should be able to test our function um, or a new thing now again it doesn't change much in terms of what we have but there's an error somewhere so I can do the check here, run that. Okay, and it says comment DAO provider. Of course, um, did I put my DAO in here? No, I did not. So um, where is the DAO? It's in a factory directory. And it's called common DAO. And let's rename this. Let's call it comment DAO. And so let's see if it's going to get refresh once it's saved. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Factory comment dash deal. Oh. Um, why is it completing? To do factory. Okay. okay comment dash dao dot js comment dash dao dot js um i don't know why it's giving me it added our resource before i don't know why it's giving me an issue okay um it didn't like that for whatever reason i took it out and it worked so that's all we care about and so let's see if this still works now what i said before when we weren't using a DAO was that I can type a subject here, some new comment, press create, and it would try to create it. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. Um, of course, um, it failed. And so my rejection here, um, when it's returned a reject error for this, I return it to my controller and I should have caught it and put it in self message. And if I put it in self message, that should show up on my template um, CTRL that message. And it did not show up. And so, what am I doing wrong in my DAO? Oh, I, I, I called the sign Q. But I never installed data sign Q, injected it. Data sign Q. Um, and I didn't get any error message. No, that's very bad. But, all right, let's try this again. It should save and refresh. Oh, there, I need this problem. So once it's save, refresh. Come on, update. Okay, what's missing? So does and Q come out, does and comment, does and resource. Oh, I don't need a string here. All right. All right. So save, refresh. Come on, refresh. Okay. Close that and refresh close this and so I'm gonna do another new comment and I'm gonna say create and again I don't see my error message pop up there so I'm not sure why this is not working um, it's exact pretty much exactly the same as this you know um, I installed the DAO saying Q service and I only use it to create a reject and reject error, um, return Q that reject error. And so on my comment deal, um, oh, uh, of course I don't return the error. I just created it, I didn't return it. Uh, that's silly. I need to return. Well, oh, here's create. I did return Q that reject error. So um, it's kind of baffling me why this is not working, but I'll try and figure out 
why that that is. It's very strange. It looks pretty much like the same. My create here look the same as a to do create. Uh, create to do. Um, save promise then, and then on error is return queue that return new object. So I don't I don't see why. The only difference is they pulled out their anonymous their function where it, and then passed a reference to it. Whereas I actually put the function in place, but that does not change anything. So um, something probably something very simple. I'm overlooking. So catch function error. Let's see. Then function result return new comment. That's exactly what we want. Um, not sure. Missing it right now. Um, but um, this should work the same way. Um, I delete. If we put an ID and I said delete, um, okay, I broke my code somewhere. Uh, oh, there are the deletes, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then create. So there we go. There's the post to create. What about get? Notice how it tried to post to this URL because there was a an object with ampersand with pro property one. Um, get uh, yep, there we get on one and then delete. Okay, delete is not being called, and I don't know why it should be called. It should be called CTRL remove, and in our controller. We should have comment controller remove self that remove function. Take this ID comment deal that delete. Oh, this, I think this is gonna move. That's why. Um, let's call remove. Ah, yep. There we go. Let's call remove. All right. Um, so now I should do. And then if I say delete, there we go. Okay, so that's back to working. Um, but I still don't know why my create is not working, why it's, oh, I don't need a, when I do a post, a create, I don't need a thing. Yeah, so it prays the comments and I don't know why um, the response, I'm not seeing that response. And can I post, yeah. I'm not, I don't know why I'm not seeing that. So the general gist though, is that we've refracted our things from our controller. Now our controller uses the comment that DAO without, and just the promises that are returned. It doesn't have to deal with anything else. Um, just let me see if this works. Let's see. So when I do a create this console, that log, x, 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 you know. And if I see this on the console, then it means that function is being called. Oh. Catch, huh? So it's saying there's a read-only property called catch. What is that? So create and say cannot read property then of undefined. Cannot read property then of undefined. So create. Okay. Mm, Dao. So do do a. Ah. Yeah. I need to send that function. So if you call this function, the create function, it should return. Ha, that's why it didn't work. I need to return the promise from the resource that insert call, which is going to be a promise. And then because I return another promise, yep, I need to return this. <laughs> ah, silly me. All right, now I look over the code, then. All right, makes sense now, our kid dokey. So if that saves an update. Okay, didn't cause an update. Don't know why again. Grab that, create. And now we see the, uh, the error, right? Again, you can see that my catch function as well. It's because I didn't return the um, resource so that, hence it couldn't chain so in my controller 
it didn't know what then was our catch because it didn't have a promise. But I needed to return a promise from this call. And that is by returning the resource itself. Because remember the resource, you invoke a promise, it creates, you invoke an action on the resource, it creates a promise, and then you could chain promises. And you could return a value from a promise, or you could return yet another promise or a rejection. So yeah. So hopefully, um, this wasn't too long-winded, it's kind of long, but you get the idea of how we refactor um, the code that we had here to talk to our backend using the resource, we refactored it into a DAO, which hides all that detail. And so now the controller simply use the DAO and its method is provide, and the, because they return promises, the catch and then function. All right. See you in the next video and we'll show how you can sort of do the model and the resource and all that all in, all in one shot by creating a module. All right, see you in the next video. Take care, try it out, subscribe, leave comment, feedback, whatever. All right, spread the word.